I uh, just one thing. I mean, not before. You know, at least, I, as far as I can talk about Japanese, Chinese, and Persians. I mean, or Ottoman as well. What I've seen in museums. Um, I mean, okay. I'm not talking about very high king sorts, which I uh, mm -hmm. analyze. But the rest of them, you see, most some of them have agenicus. Some of them, but most of them, if you look closely, even if they are polished mm -hmm. because they're beautiful blades, you see they have cuts on the side. Mm -hmm. traces of many more than they have actually yeah you see that what i have to give it to those guys who right. talk about a uh, uh, flat parry right i you know i i just say it as a museum guy right. analyst right this i see that but besides that i have as a fighter i have come to the conclusion as you yeah. said it as well when i want to fight today right I, I will just parry right. whatever I can if I see my right. hand. You know, in the past, seriously, even in endurance fight, I saw that my hands was getting tired, but I was still trying to parry in the historical correct way. Today, I would no right. longer do that. You know, you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. See? And it's interesting, like like when we do these parries, um, we are doing like like I said, the first couple are, are primarily obstruction parries. But then when you get to those sweeping parries, that's when we start actually using a little more sophisticated portion of the blade to, you know, sweep and to guide those those blades away. So I, I think that the way that they approached it was to start off real simple, you know, in that sense, you know, hey, something's coming towards you, you, you obstruct it, and then you work off of it. Okay, so now you have that foundation down. Now, um, if you can create the right type of situation, now you can start using these the the flat the uh the flat or the, the the spine to do your to do your pairing and I, I think that it speaks to like a um a more sophisticated fighter you know what i'm saying like if you are getting yourself ready quick fast okay you know we're going to do what's strongest and what's easiest okay so now once you have that foundation now we can work on some of the more sophisticated understanding of the blade because i do think that there is something to you know preserving your blade as much as possible but like in the chaos of a battlefield it's like because you you know if you think about it you have no way of controlling if your blade is going to get nicked anyways like so if we're fighting in, in armor or fighting with metal shields i mean your blade will probably end up getting nicked on the edge anyways by yeah. you know just by trying to missing a target or hitting a shield or whatever so it's you know it's an academic discussion but at the at the end of the day fighters fight and that's just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I just cool. uh, admit, you, we'll move on. <laughs> I have another question for you. This matrak you talked about it, uh -huh. it's done only in Algeria or also in neighboring countries? So I get into, I get either, I get on my YouTube channel, I get either like a lot of support from Algerians. Like they all said, oh man, this is great to see matrak. I'm glad to see, glad that you're doing this. And um, then sometimes I get people from Algeria that are like, oh, no, it's like this is this is our, our art and, you know, it's not it's not any done anywhere else. So there's an early clip uh, from, I think, what, 19, 1908, 1910. Right. And it's in uh, Jeradia, Morocco, and it's showing uh, uh, an older guy and a, and a, and a boy. And they're, they're doing they're doing they're doing stick fighting, which looks like math. Right. Um, so there's also another video clip of, uh, of, uh, it's from a British film showing, uh, it's, it's called Tuareg Country, but it's actually kind of showing different cultures uh, across the Sahara. And, um, I think that this culture that they're in is either Southern Algeria or Southern, Southern Morocco or whatnot. And they're doing math, they're doing stick fighting, they do some wrestling, right? And, um, you know, I think that um the stick fighting is done was you know because these 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 lines are invisible lines you know between algeria and morocco those are these are all invisible lines right but now it's like where when national pride is kind of a thing then it becomes a it becomes a thing but uh pretty much my my uh my my teachers say that uh it's primarily in western algeria and then also in parts of morocco is where oh, your teacher in algeria you mean Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a, I have two mentors I work with primarily in Mathrag, uh, Sheikh Chadli and Sheikh Belmeki, um, and they're like they've they've kind of they've supported my my pursuits to reconstruct sword from from the art and stuff. So yeah, I work I work with those guys. 
Uh, and they live in Algeria, correct? Uh, Belmeki lives in Algeria. Sheikh Chadi is actually in France. Oh, in France. Oh, okay. I remember. I remember. Okay. I don't want to go into that, but I remember one. I remember that. Okay. Yes. yes yeah, yeah. 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 So. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So he's doing some really cool stuff in, in Marseille. They're doing um, horsemanship and they're doing Mathrag from horseback, which is kind of, which is kind of cool. Uh, so hopefully when I get down there, I get to jump on a horse and play around with that a little bit. And they do they do stick fighting, and you are transferring this stick fighting tradition into mm -hmm. swords. Did I understand you yes. correctly? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And there's a there's a few people I've seen a few people who actually do the sword work. And um, again, you know, in the United States, in the particularly in my state, we're pretty. They're pretty. I mean, it's pretty easy for us. We can own swords. Um, we can have swords on our person now in Texas, you know, it's like now you can walk around with a sword, you know, everyday life. Um, not every place is like that in, in our country. And then, you know, then not everybody and not everywhere else is um, not other countries, you know, other countries have even more restrictions on those kinds of weapons and stuff. So I think part of the reason why you don't see sword work used as much in Algeria is because there are restrictions on having blades, but there's no, you know, real restrictions on doing the sticks, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's an international problem. Even in Europe, it uh, is different from one country to the other. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so that's a little bit of mathrag. Um, okay, just before we go ahead, so this mm -hmm. is um, part of your, just for our viewers, part of, of uh, historical mm -hmm. African martial arts, which you teach and practice mm -hmm. is Mafrak. So you mm -hmm. I just make a, you know, just a resume. I'm just trying to make, you know, so you just, um, you, uh, you mm -hmm. based on uh, traditional stick fighting, which have uh, been, uh, you know, passed on from one generation to the other. You are now working mm -hmm. with two mentors, one in Algeria, one in France, uh, and you are transferring stick fighting systems true sword uh, fighting. Just one question before we go ahead. Yes. Are there any books published on this? In French, in English, uh, or whatever, or in Arabic? I don't think so. And that's one that we're working on. We're working on actually doing a, getting a, um, a source book for Mathrag in, in at least in English. Um, I've, I've spoken uh, to, and I know Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Bel Meki is working on a, a book for Mathrag. Um, and he, he does, he does another form of, uh, so there's different types of sticks that they'll use in Mathrag. So one, the Mathrag itself is that single stick you'd use with one hand, but there's a heavier, slightly longer stick to call a wakaf, which you use with two hands. And he does a lot of that work. And then you use, um, a double stick, uh, as well. So he's working on a book on Mathrag. Uh, last time I checked, uh, it will be probably in French and in Arabic. But um, I've been trying to get together work on material for a book in English because I have a lot of English speakers who want to know more about the art, and uh, they're eager to kind of share, you know, Mathrag uh, with the world, and especially like here in the West. So that's kind of one of the things that we need. We need like a, a really good source book. Uh, but it's, it's hard sometimes to kind of, you know, especially when you want to like, you want to delve into the origins, even like just the more recent local, you know, um, because, yeah, when, when you want to delve into the history, especially even like the recent history, because there was a lot of, there was a big um, resurgence in the art, you know, I think in like the 70s and 80s. And uh, again, all this has to do with, you know, first Ottoman colonialism and then French colonialism, where it just kind of like, you know, kind of went underground. So there's a lot of information that, um, you know, that's out there. It's just kind of getting access to the, the, the elders and being able to like get their stories and find out, you know, more. But I haven't really been able to trace back uh, the art past um, Abdul Qadir and um, even with my, with my teachers, my mentors, they go back to, uh, gosh, I'm putting myself on the spot. I can't remember the name of this 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 uh, chef. Um, gosh, okay, I'm embarrassing myself. I can't remember his name. It's bad, but um, um, he was one of the ones that is accredited with kind of the the resurgence of the art um, in like the 
the eighties. You know, this is like this is fairly recent, you know, stuff. So um Okay, so this was Mafra. Could you just tell us, uh, I mean, we are going to invite you more often to this channel, that's for sure, but could you show mm -hmm. us another weapon set you teach and something else for our viewers? Yeah, yeah, Sure, 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 sure. Okay, let's, let's, uh, we'll do this one. Let's go to this guy here. Okay, so now we're going to switch gears and we're going to go uh, to the machete, all right? Yeah. So machete fencing is common uh, throughout the African diaspora. Now we're talking about in South America um, and the Caribbean. Um, so from the cultures that were brought over during the slave trade, um, from primarily from West Africa and from Central Africa, the types of swords and weapons that they used were shorter, close quarter weapons, much like in the Philippines, um, and especially in areas where you're dealing where where it was more uh, uh, rainforest, uh, the fighting was a lot closer. Um, there wasn't an emphasis on cavalry like you will find like in the Sahel, um, in the more um, areas like Niger or Mali or, or whatnot. Even though some of those people were brought over during slave trade as well. So in West Africa, in uh, the rainforest areas in West Africa and in Central Africa they used uh, shorter swords um, and developed a number of different ways of, of, of approaching combat that was really unique. Um, one, especially in the case of Central Africa, the development of different types of war dances um, helped to train the warriors for, for the battlefield. Um, in particular, there's two dances that was done, the uh, Ngolo and the Insanga. Uh, the Ngolo, is said to be the predecessor of uh, capoeira um, and other striking arts you find in the African diaspora. So Ngolo is like the mother of capoeira, uh, damie, um, uh, what is it, uh, mani, and so forth and so on. Now, what these cultures emphasize was um, since uh, the large number of the warriors didn't use, didn't use, weren't heavily, wasn't, weren't armored necessarily, and they didn't use uh, shields. This is particular in, in Central Africa. Uh, what they developed was this ability to void and evade being hit by, struck by edge impact weapons. And now we have accounts of this uh, uh, from a, a Jesuit priest that was traveling in the area and wrote um, extensively on the Nsenga dances. Now the Angola dance has been uh, documented by uh, Professor Desh, TJ Desh Obi um, and showing the connections between it and Capoeira, but it's the main thing that these two practices for, developed was dynamic evasion, um, uh, gosh, inversion in some of the, in some of the striking, uh, striking arts, but dynamic evasion footwork, body angling, and um, you'll see this kind of in play in different of the stick and blade arts in the uh, Caribbean and South America. So what we're going to show is uh, a little bit of uh, machete fencing from, from Colombia and from Haiti, and then kind of what we do with it. Okay. Cool. Ready? All right. So we're going to start simple. Um, basically, um, and, and in, in the case for Colombia, the machete was used in conjunction with a with another weapon called a bourdon. Now the bourdon was like a was like a spear, is what it means, like a little short spear, and then it later just became a stick. So they'll use the machete and the stick together. Now that's more advanced. Typically, you start off with just the machete. Okay, so um, just how it looks together first and then we'll go to this just just the machete so the machete the bourdon thrusting striking and you have this motion where i'm moving here or i'm moving off to the sides so you'll see a lot of lateral low side movements thrusting feints and evasions okay so when we take an advanced practice so what we do is uh, I'll show you our basic cuts and movements with each other, and then uh, we'll show some applications to that, okay? All right. 
So starting here with our with our weapon side bat. And so there's a number of guards and positions that we'll take. And again, a lot of this is based off of deception. So there's a lot of positions and postures and movements that, you know, they'll assume in order to like bait an attack or to, to present a certain idea to their partner. But just starting off fresh, we'll start here. And um, we're gonna track forward. So I'm gonna step forward, he'll step back. We're gonna start off with a low cut to the leg, okay? So I come in, I cut to the leg, we cross, and we're out of frame for it. <laughs> short everything? Yeah, yeah, we'll short it. Here we go. So just our two quick steps, I'll step into frame. So we'll come in low, one, two, and then he comes in for me, one, two, and I come in, one, two. So we'll start off when we're doing this, they'll have the hand behind the back to kind of get it out of the way. But when you are moving, the hands will kind of move with it, especially when you have another weapon, all right? So he comes in again, one, two. Okay, so we take that part, right? So when we're crossing the blade, and we'll do this with the other angles as well. Let's go high diagonals. He comes in. So we'll cross, cross, and cross, cross, down, down. And then give me horizontals. We come in high to the head. Boom, one, two, high to the head. Boom, get into the body. Body. Get down, to down, for now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Boom, boom, body. Body. Cross to the body. And flex. Okay, so those are some of the motions of parries, you know, so we cross cut against the low angles, the same angle up top, cross cut against the high horizontal, it's tip up, tip up, tip down, tip down for the thrust, again, tip down, tip down, or if it's higher, tip up, tip up, just a few. There. Oh, and we forgot overhead and then the low, which is nothing special, nothing different. He goes top of the head, he steps in, it's out here, and then the other side, boom, here, so upside, the way. yeah, boom, boom, and then boom, 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 boom. He goes underneath now. For underneath, I'll cover, cover. It's not too dissimilar to math rag as far as those basic angles go. Now, where it starts to get different, not necessarily, but when we start working on, when we do this, we're practicing some more core, uh, choreographed style movements with each other, right? When we start applying this to like, outside of the cultural context into like, okay, now we're, we're just fighting with the machete, okay? We're fighting with the short sword. So starting up here, we'll start with the low cuts, okay? And we're super close to each other. So he'll step in and give me that cut. And I'll step out, right? And one more time, step in. And cool. now he's going to put your machete back on here. So I'm going to cut for his leg. He's going to board the edge. Yeah, just board. Once again, just board. And he just boards. Okay, cool. Now we're going to add to the void. Let's a little bit. When he goes to cut for my leg, I'm going to void and take the arm. Boy, take the arm, I come in, arm, arm. Same thing, he cuts for the leg, I go head, boom, head or whatever I can't get that's not the arm. Good. Also, here, he goes to cut for my leg. So then another footwork pattern is this. So, let me bring my camera down here. So, in capoeira, we jinga, right? One, two, right, like this. So it's making a female triangle. Here's the base, and behind me is the point of the triangle. The movement I just did to avoid my leg getting cut is more of a male triangle with the point, the point forward. As he comes in to cut my leg, I step and I move out here. So we are in position here. He comes in to cut my leg, and boom, there's my avoid. 
And as I avoid, I, I he can't see any of that. I just start <laughs> passing steps, Sorry. moving forward, moving back. And then we have this evading footwork that we do. When someone goes to cut the leg, we move and we strike. Um, of course, back to it. Okay, sorry. So now my partner gives me the diagonal cut, right? So we move, we void, right? So now what I'm going to do is as he gives me the diagonal cut, I'm going to move off and then come in and be able to, to touch. So we take our footwork from a line. And now we can come in. Let's change angles real quick. So I'm here. He goes in and gives me that cut. Yep. Mm -hmm. Gives me the cut. And I deflect. And I come in and get all the strikes that I need. At the same time, I can also, when he cuts, deflect it down and give my strikes. <clears throat> Adding the hand to it now, as my partner cuts, I can start intercepting that hand and then passing it down as well. And which leads into more of um, these stops, these checks, these passes that we'll do. So we'll show a little bit of that. Uh, if you look at Venezuelan machete, it's really, really common in that style of uh, that style of uh, machete fighting. So we'll go here. Let's see if we can this way a little bit. Cool. So Pete, go ahead and step forward and give me that. This is the overheads first. So this is the common thing you'll see in Venezuela machete where you're passing and we're passing more in a line right now. We're gonna start circling each other in a bit. We're gonna go circle this next one. He circles out and I follow him. So we're here, go ahead again. So of course, we're kind of catching this, we're in a, we're in a a drill space more so in a fight space, okay? So this is just for us when we are, we're kind of learning how to, what to do with this hand when we need it, right? But it's kind of happening in a space where Rook, the measure is not, not necessarily the correct measure. But anyhow, it's kind of like when you see in Filipino arts, when they're doing Sagung Lebo, they're in this range, this middle range. So we're kind of doing that right now. So. He's going to integrate a different cut to this motion. Okay, so we'll start with the overheads. So, boom, boom. We'll a line right now. So if he wants to integrate, say like a thrust or something. So now there's a thrust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is just high, high. Oh. Here I'm gonna cut to his leg. Cut to my leg. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Cut to my leg, and there's that sweeping parry again. Mm -hmm. Cut the leg. And this is just again, so that when we we go out, now we're in like we're fight mode now. Okay. Yeah. So like now, when we're ready to like, okay, we're we're fighting, right? And I, you know, whatever happens here, this understanding. Turn this way again. He gives me that strike, boom, I'm here. Now I can do all that stuff that I was doing earlier. You know, boom, take him down, swing, cut, whatever else. Uh, again, give me another one here. I can jam or boom, hit with the thrust at the same time and boom, then clear. But all this is built on our ability to snipe on the outside, right? He gives me being able to no, stay out. Let me go back. Being able to snipe the blade. Give some more strikes. Snipe on the outside. Okay. So we start off long, and then if we need to come in for some of the hand movements, they're there for Again, us. Uh, because, <clears throat> excuse me, it was not recording. I'm recording it now. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. So, to wrap it up, 
these techniques you are showing, African martial arts, you are also doing Central, uh, Mar uh, Central American martial arts from Central America because they have African origin, because uh, Africans who were brought to uh, Americas back then, I mean, the continents, I mean, they brought yeah, their yeah. martial arts, as we know, like capoeira or the rest, and they, uh, you, that's why you practice. Am I correct? Yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, so we deal with the continental fighting arts as well as the diaspora. So this right now is fighting arts from the African diaspora. Okay. So, uh, and there is a difference between, as I understood you correctly, between Colombian, between um, Venezuelan, yes. or different? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have some similarities, but I think, you know, even like when I was showing the kind of the passing movements yes. with the hands, they there you can you will find that in Colombia as well, but in Venezuela the flow of it like Colombia machete takes place at a very long range, uh, long sniping range. Venezuelan machete happens in like a like a middle range where we're you know we're in that range where we can clear clear the weapons and stuff, middle to to close. And now Haitian machete happens at close range. Really, really close. You, you actually are striving to get as, as close as you can to shut down the arm. So, and that's what we'll show, we'll show next. Okay, just one more question. Uh, do, do you train the people from those areas or what do you do to, to train these arts? Um, I, have a, I, have a, I have a teacher and mentor in, in both. So my focus, my primary focus, Colombian and, and Haitian. I have mentors and, and friends in those arts. So I work with um, Maestro Lorido from Colombia. And I work with uh, Mike Dillon, who's, uh, who's kind of one of the guys that kind of brought the Avril style of Haitian machete kind of out um, outside of Haiti. So I work with I work with those two guys in those in those traditions. And I loosely am I'm still in the process of working on um, with working on Venezuela machete with uh, Maestro um, Hector Ramos. So I'll be working with him soon. So those are my, 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 my three main entries into these art forms. Very good. Thank you very much for taking your time and showing us this. Today, I don't know what happened. So my, my apologies to viewers here that the internet connection was not very good. So sometimes it was slow, sometimes it was disconnected, but hopefully next time you're going to have a better internet connection. Thanks a lot uh, for taking part in today's uh, video here and show, showing us these techniques. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. No, my pleasure.